It's done. A port the United States Navy has not visited in over 19 years. Personally, this is the third time I've visited Israel. The previous time was last May when, as many of you know, the Ross visited Haifa. I would like to speak briefly, however, about the first time I visited Israel. It was as a graduate student, not associated with the military. It was a journey throughout the country, and it was a tremendous experience. From the Sea of Galilee, to floating in the Dead Sea, from the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, to surfing in Tel Aviv, and even having a small taste of that city's amazing nightlife. I was able to take in the moment and to see that close relationship between our nations extends much further than military to military. Born of shared values and vision, it is personal. And it excites me now that my sailors are building those same memories themselves as they take tours to visit these amazing sites, including to the place of my most special memory in Israel, when I hiked up Masada at dawn and watched the sunrise. With goosebumps and the hair on the back of my neck standing up, I personally felt the deep heritage of Israel. We are honored to be here to serve as a solid example of our strategic relationship. Thank you for the opportunity. Lastly, I'd like to thank my crew and the embassy staff for their hard work in putting this great event together. A round of applause for them, please. Now it is my distinct pleasure to invite Prime Minister Netanyahu, a champion of U.S.-Israeli relations and a friend of the United States Navy, to say a few words. Please join me in welcoming Prime Minister Netanyahu. Thank you, uh, Commander Cole. It's uh, a pleasure and a moving moment for me to be on uh, the USS Ross with Ambassador David Friedman and his wife Tammy, with uh, General Martin, with Minister Katz, with uh, the commander of our Navy, General Shavit, Admiral Shavit with my wife, Sarah. When I was uh, elected for the first time, believe it or not, it was, uh, I think, 21 years ago. 22 already? Oh, God. How time flies when you enjoy yourself, you know. Uh, I think we had, shortly afterwards, a visit of uh, a U.S. aircraft carrier. And it was a memorable visit to see this great manifestation of American power. And uh, it's been a while, but that tradition has been refreshed recently. And this is the first visit, uh, as uh, Commander Cole said, first visit in Ashdod of an American warship in 19 years. And I think it comes at a propitious time. Uh, it comes at a time when uh, our values are tested, our interests are challenged, and there is nothing like the American-Israeli alliance, which is manifested in so many ways, but most especially in the sharing of military intelligence and in military cooperation against terror, against the aggressive force of Iran in this region. We are committed to preventing Iran from uh, expanding its empire. We want them to go back to Iran, to get out of Syria, get out of Yemen, get out of Iraq, and stop building war and misery, creating misery everywhere they go. This is a commitment that President Trump has expressed many times, and he expresses support for Israel's right to defend itself against Iran's aggression against Israel in Syria. He said, we back you 100%. And I believe that, in a way, this visit expresses that commitment so clearly and that partnership so well. I want to say a word about the, the Navy. Um, uh, I want to say a word about the Navy, the Israeli Navy, and then a word about the American Navy. My experience with uh, the Navy is a mixed one. Uh, I was on land forces. I was in special forces, you know. And 
they, we went in the air in helicopters. We occasionally jumped from airplanes, but we didn't really take to the sea. Well, they put me on a missile boat opposite Beirut, and I vomited my heart out. <laughs> I mean, it's very clear that wasn't for me. But then we had this special operation, which was combined between us and our naval commanders, the Navy SEALs. And there was, they took us to a place in Haifa, and they tested uh, all the teams uh, in my unit, and I was a commander of a team, and to my chagrin, my team won. I mean, they cooked us, they baked us, they put pressure on us, all sorts of things like that, and we came out first, so I was immediately summoned to the naval commando's base on the Mediterranean, and they started teaching us how to dive, military diving, and it was just awful. And then after a month, it was great. And I had unbelievable appreciation for the skill and for the uh, uh, commitment of the Navy people in Israel, and that extends exactly to the American Navy. American naval power has changed the world, it's safeguarded the world. It is uh, the force of freedom. We say we're committed to the values of freedom and liberty, but if you can't defend liberty, it's a meaningless commitment. And since America became the preeminent force in the world, it's projected American power, which means the power of freedom, to every part of the globe. We know what the world was like in the first half of the American century, of the 20th century, when America was not the preeminent power in the world, and we, we experienced the greatest tragedies in history. But from the second part of the 20th century till today, it is American power that protects American values that are universal values that we in Israel share. And the preeminent value is that of liberty. The U.S. Navy's role in this is enormous. It's always been enormous, and it still is. So I want to thank you on behalf of free peoples everywhere, but especially the free people of the democracy called Israel, your best ally in the world. Thank you, and welcome to Ashdod. Sorry, here. Hey, next, it is my honor and privilege to introduce U.S. Ambassador to Israel, the Honorable David Friedman. Ambassador Friedman began his term March of 2017. Prior to accepting this assignment, Ambassador Friedman practiced law in New York City and was a founding partner of the law firm Kazowitz, Benson, Torres, and Friedman. He and his wife of 36 years have five children and seven grandchildren. Let's welcome him on board, USS Ross. Thank you so much. Mr. Prime Minister, Madam Prime Minister, Sarah Netanyahu, Commanding Officer, David Coles, Vice Admiral, Sharvit, Brigadier General, Corey Martin, I'm sure you're here somewhere, um, Member of Knesset, Minister Yisrael Katz, uh, Mayor of Ashdod, Yechiel Lazari, distinguished guests, and to all the officers and sailors serving aboard the USS Ross, it is my honor to welcome all of you to Israel, and in particular, to welcome you to the port of Ashdod, where for the first time in 19 years, an American warship has come to visit. I'm certain that the crew has enjoyed the warm hospitality of the city of Ashdod, as well as the beauty and the history of the various sites around Israel, as Commander Coles so beautifully and movingly described. And I'm so grateful to Commander Coles and his crew, who worked so hard to get the ship ready for this fantastic reception. Thank you so much for your hospitality. It's greatly appreciated. We gather here tonight on this beautiful ship, on this beautiful night, to celebrate the 243rd birthday of the United States Navy.
from a modest beginning of just two gunboats in 1775, today the Navy has some 286 sophisticated ships, more than 3,700 aircraft, and more than 600,000 active duty, reserve, and civilian personnel. But even more impressive than its awesome size and power, the Navy operates every day throughout the world in calm seas and in rough waters, protecting American citizens, American allies, and American values. We are all eternally grateful for your service, as well as the service of your families who wait for your safe return, and we pray that God will grant all of you a safe return. We pray for all of you every day. I hope the symbolism of this moment is not lost upon anyone. Israel and the United States have enjoyed a close and mutually beneficial relationship for decades. The presence of the USS Ross in Ashdod and her patrols throughout the Mediterranean Sea represent the commitment of the United States to provide credible defensive assistance to Israel against all external threats. This vessel is a testament to American resolve to confront and defeat violent extremist organizations and nations wherever they operate. There is no more fitting place for the USS Ross to seek safe harbor than the State of Israel, which stands on the front lines of this effort as a critical partner with the United States. I am humbled to address you this evening, and again, I want to thank all of you for being here to celebrate and to honor our United States Navy. May God bless all of those who serve on this ship. May God protect all of those who serve on this ship. May God bless the United States Navy. May God bless the State of Israel, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.